Hi everyone, my name is Anaga and, in, and I'm part of the uh, data science discovery team and in this video today we are going to be doing a question on a grade count in all subjects. So let's go ahead and get started. So here it says write the Python code to find the total number of C minuses given in every subject at Illinois. So let's go ahead and first look at what our data frame looks like. So here we basically have uh, each row representing a different type of course uh, taught by you know a different instructor and it gives information such as the uh, you know the the term as well as a year when it when the course was taught uh, the type the number of students who got you know each respective grade like a plus a a minus uh, as well as the primary instructor and the total number of students so here we want to find the total number of C minuses given in every subject at Illinois so the first thing I see here in this data frame is that there are a bunch of different courses that belong to many different subjects right each row is a different uh, let's say like an instance of a course, right? But we want to find the total number of C minuses given in every subject. And it says your solution must include only a single row for each subject. So each row must contain a different type of subject as well as like, you know, the C minus column, which represents the total number of C minuses given for that subject. So if each row represents each subject, that means there's going to be some, you know, grouping that has to be done here. So the first thing that comes to mind, <coughs> our step one, is we want to really group the data frame. Uh, and what do we want to group by? Well, it says here that we want to find the total, um, the Python code to find the total number of C minuses given in every subject, right? So each row must contain a subject. That means we need to group the data frame by our uh, subject. And the fact that it says here that each row must contain subject is oftentimes a really good indicator of what variable or what column we need to group by, right? If it said that each row must contain like a, a different course, then we would have to group by our course title, right? But here, we want each row must be a, a different subject. So we want to basically, <coughs> we have all these rows of all these courses that belong to you know, all these subjects, and we want to compile all the courses that belong in each subject so we only have one row per subject. So that's how we're going to group the data frame by. And we, um, so like how do we want to aggregate all of these, all of these rows and all this data? Well, we have three options to aggregate data, right? We can either aggregate by mean, by count, or by sum. So since we want to find the total number <coughs> of C minuses given in every single subject, then you know this is really an indicator that we want to add up all of the um, basically all of the C minuses, right? That are in each um, that that are in each subject, and we want to basically go ahead and add up all of those all of those values in that C minus column and basically you know condense that all into into each row so it makes sense to aggregate by sum here because we want to go ahead and add up all the c minuses for each course that belongs to each subject right it doesn't make sense to find the mean of anything right because the question is not asking for the i don't know for like the average number of c minuses right it's it's asking for the total number of c minuses so it would make sense to do sum here and it wouldn't make sense to aggregate by count because remember that count finds the total number of rows that belong in each group, in each subject here. So it's basically going to count up all the courses that belong in each subject. It's going gonna, it's gonna to count up all the rows and it's going to keep a, a tally of essentially how many rows or how many courses belong in each subject. And that's, that wouldn't make sense here because we don't want to find the total number of you know different courses in each subject we want to find the total number of c minuses for each subject so that really means that you know the the column values really matter and that's why the sum would make sense we can do some examples further to see why you know the other the other uh, measures such as count wouldn't really uh, you know make sense in this situation so I want to go ahead and start grouping my data frame and here we can call it we can call the group data frame any variable we want but here since they just gave us df grade count in our starter code I'll just go ahead and use that so df grade count <coughs> equals df dot group by we want to group by subject here 
right? And aggregate by sum, and then we want to reset our index in the end. So when I output my DF grade count, basically this is what it looks like. So each row is a different type of subject, right? Before we had each row was a different type of course that was offered at the university. But when we aggregate, when we group by subject, each row becomes one subject because all of the courses for that specific subject are basically condensed and, and you know, really aggregated by the sum so that each subject only has one row. So we can see here that when we aggregate by sum, we're basically totaling up all of the values in our <clears throat> numerical columns for um, each course that belongs to you know, that certain subject and just presenting the totals here. So that's why you may um, notice that some columns, like the primary instructor, uh, aren't shown here. Well, well, that makes sense because you can't really add up primary instructors, right? It really doesn't make sense to add up strings. So whenever we aggregate by sum, <clears throat> it automatically eliminates any non-numerical columns that we can't take the sum of. So that's why uh, columns such as year, well, even though it doesn't make sense to add up years, um, you know, it, it's still contained in our grouped data frame just because it is a numerical column. And, and that's why this number is so big because we're basically just adding up all the years whenever we see a course that belongs to um, a, the AAS subject. And, you know, these types of values here are basically just sums of, you know, the column values of that course that belong to that certain subject. So we're basically going down each row. And whenever we see um, a course that belongs to, let's say, the AAS subject, we're just adding up <clears throat> all the values for all these numerical columns. And same with the ABE subject, same with all of these other subjects. We're just totaling all of the numerical columns of courses that belong to that respective subject. Now, when we do count, you're gonna see here that, okay, I do have all of my columns, but each row, it's, it's, it has the same number, right? Um, sorry, each column has the same number in, in one row. So for example, when we have the AAS subject here, each column has a value of 10, and you may wonder, okay, why is that happening? Well, in count, we basically count up all the rows that belong to that group or to or to that subject. So 10 represents the total number of rows, or the total number of courses in this case, that belong to the AAS subject. And that's why all of these <coughs> um, values are the same, because whenever we aggregate by count, we don't care about the actual values that are contained in the columns themselves. We don't care about the year, uh, we don't care about any of these, any of these grades, We're, because each column it gets overwritten by the total count for that subject, by that total number of rows that belong in each subject. That's why all of these values are 10, because there's 10 rows that belong to this subject, there's five rows that belong to this subject, there's 94 rows or courses that belong to this subject. So that's why all these values are the same, because in count, we're just really counting up all the rows that you know, belong to that certain group. And that really doesn't make sense in that question here, because the question is asking us to find the total number of C minuses given in every subject. But this represents the total number of courses that belong to each subject. And it's really ignoring um, how many C minuses were given to were given in that subject because whenever we aggregate by count, as I mentioned before, the actual column values get lost because they get overwritten by you know the total number of rows that belong to that group. So here Using sum, it really shows that <clears throat> okay in the in our AAS subject there were 31 total students that received an A plus. There were four students that received a C minus, and then same um, thing with all these sub other subjects. For example, in TCM there were uh, three students who received a C minus. Three total students um, that received a C minus in in the like overall TCM subject. So we can see here that really answers the question that where we find the total number of C minuses given in every subject. And I think that's all the question is asking us to do, right? It's just asking us to make this uh, grouped column and you can create extra columns, but only these two will be graded. And when we submit our code, well, we got it correct. And, and that's really expected, right? We um, made sure to output 
our, our data frame, our group data frame to make sure that I make sense. And you know, if you're ever confused about what to aggregate by, well, you can test it out, right? You can aggregate by count. And if it makes sense, then okay, that's the one to use. But if it doesn't, well, that's a good indicator that, you know, you should use something else. And this process of, you know, constant trial and error is, is really a good process to figure out when to use these types of, you know, the aggregate, aggregate by count sum versus mean to really understand how to, you know, group these data frames and, and what these results will look like. So I hope this, uh, you know, video was helpful. If you have any questions, let me know, and I'll see you next time. Bye.